What we plan for the session today is, is I'll, I'll try and run through a few case study examples of where, where we believe as a port we've added value. Um, I'll bring in Michael and, and Frank a, a, at the appropriate time so, so they can share their experiences. We'll have a bit of a conversation at the end, but, but most importantly is, is to get feedback from yourselves in terms of, you know, can ports add value, how do ports add value, what is it that ports are doing well, share some best practice, and then what are the areas that ports need to work on to go forward. On-port warehousing is, is something that's been often talked about and is the cornerstone of, of what people have traditionally seen as port-centric logistics. However, there's another area of, of storage that's possible, and that's for imported goods that are going into production post processes, a bit similar to uh, what Michael's just talked about. Um, using the container as a temporary storage uh, vessel, if you like, uh, on, on the port estate. Uh, the case study we have here is, is uh, one that's, again, been used now for a couple of years in the port of Liverpool with, with Heinz. Uh, Heinz import their, their raw bean from, from Canada and uh, their production facility is probably about 50 miles along the, uh, the M58 motorway uh, in, in Kit Green near Wigan. And, and what, we do, what we offer as a service for Heinz is rather than the traditional route, which is take the container and empty it into a, a silo uh, for a period of time uh, until such point the manufacturing process is ready to, uh, to, to take place, the goods remain on the key inside the container. Now, this obviously, again, needs, it's not just collaboration from the port in providing the space and the access. It also requires collaboration from the shipping line making the container available. Um, and again, uh, the ability to do that will ver vary by lines, but it's something that's worked successfully for the, for the shipping lines that have been uh, providing the services to, to Heinz. And, and what that does is, is that takes total links out of the supply chain. So this isn't about reducing a cost, it's about eliminating activity. The goods stay on and they go straight into the production process, taking out that link from the storage near the plant, a conveyor and, and, and uh, uh, equipment and so on. The other thing that we've introduced quite recently is, is as, a, as a port, we've, we've focused quite intently on improving the turnaround time that we give to trucks within our container terminal. Um, Liverpool, as with many ports, didn't have the greatest of reputation in terms of hauliers. Um, trucks at peak hours would sometimes come and sit for one, possibly two hours, possibly even more on a bad day. And it was just a fact of life. It was just something you had to accept. If you wanted to come and collect a container at a port, then if you come at the peak time with everybody else, then just sit and wait in the queue. And we felt that wasn't the greatest way of um, bringing value to shippers in, in terms of adding value to that ship-to-door supply chain. Many of our customers are very, very close to the port. So an hour's delay makes a material difference. If, if you have a long four-hour, five-hour haulage journey, 20 minutes doesn't make a material difference in terms of the cost. However, if you can increase the number of journeys from one, two, or three a shift to four, five, and six a shift, that then suddenly means you're less, you need less fixed cost. Sure, your running costs, your mileage costs are exactly the same, but you need fewer drivers, you need fewer traction engines. Um, one of the things that some of the hauliers are starting to do now who are starting to benefit from these, these faster turnaround times is actually have two trailers working to one driver and, and tractor. So whilst one's being emptied, the driver's bringing another one back and, and, and turning the circle. And this adds material value to the cost of getting a container from the port to the, to the final place of use. Uh, and we're starting to see people divert cargo and bring cargo through Liverpool for, for that benefit. Um, to, to throw some stats at you, because I know you all enjoy stats at a time like this, uh, at, at uh, sort of quarter past four and on, a, on, a, on a Tuesday afternoon, um, our average turnaround time at, at Liverpool, uh, sorry, the average number of trucks that we used to process within an hour used to be 65%. So a third of trucks that used to come to the port used to have to wait for over an hour. We're now achieving 95% of trucks turned around within the hour. Um, uh, w w w which means that it's all but the exceptional truck. And the 65% of trucks are now getting turned around in 25 minutes, which is starting to add real value uh, to, the, uh, to, to the supply chain. Um, the, the final area I just want to talk about, and, and I'll, I'll bring Frank in in a minute, because uh, I know he's, he's a user of on-port warehousing facilities, is, is, is the use of warehousing. And how, how can on-port warehousing be used more flexibly to add value to supply chains? 
Um, we've, we've recently opened within, within the Port Estate in Liverpool a multi-user warehouse. Um, we knew it was something the market demanded and, and, and we knew it could offer different benefits to different people. And I guess this sums up the key message really, which is um, ports can add value to different supply chains in different ways, but not all of, them are, not all of the ways are applicable to all of the supply chains. Um, the multi-user warehouse gives us the ability to uh, offer stock overflow. So instead of having to expand warehouses, use this facility as a temporary overflow facility. Because it's within the port estate, you know, and again, subject to agreement to the, of the shipping lines, um, containers can be overloaded. It's, um, it's of no use if the goods you're importing are very light, if the clothing or, 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 or toys. But if you're importing uh, a very heavy liquid or a heavy piece of machinery, the fact that the containers can be de-stuffed on the port estate means you're not constrained by UK road regulation. Um, we have a number of retailers who are saying, look, this will never be your core DC but there are certain products that we want to deliver direct to store. So a facility like this uh, allows people to uh, empty the container and then load up curtain cider trailers, many of which are coming off the Irish Sea Roro ferries empty to take and deliver direct to store, to enable direct to store deliveries. Uh, and, and then finally, it's, it's also being used for, for seasonal support and campaign work. So in the build up to Easter, um, uh, many DIY supply chains struggle with capacity as it's approaching their peak. Uh, obviously, many retailers approach peak in the month or two before Christmas, so uh, provides additional capacity for, 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 that, for that support. Now, I guess that's a good point to bring uh, Frank in, really. Frank, I know you've, uh, you've been a user of the Port of Liverpool for uh, a number of years. Um, what are the main reasons why you chose Liverpool as opposed to some of the more popular southern ports? <laughs> Uh, one of the reasons is we have a national distribution centre which is in the uh, which is in the heart of Cheshire, so it's uh, clearly from the southeast. It's a uh, it's a long distance by road, uh, by moving all of the uh, all of the volume to Liverpool, which is what we've worked with over the last what six or seven years, I think six, seven, eight years. Um, we've been able to uh, to reduce the uh, to reduce the road mileage and certainly to reduce the costs. I'm working actively with shippers who. Uh, traditionally in the past, certainly for the Far East routes and the, uh, and the South American routes, uh, weren't offering a, uh, anything in the Northwest. Uh, we've been able to work with them to get transshipment services, so we've been able to use Liverpool. But so clearly with the uh, proximity to the, to the National Distribution Centre, uh, that certainly has, uh, has given us a great deal of advantage, not just in, the, uh, in cost, but also in terms of uh, no-shows and the uh, failures for to, of uh, vehicles to arrive. Uh, secondly, we uh, we do use the port. We use the on, on port facilities as well. We use the uh, the port warehouse, uh, which gives us the uh, the ability to be able to knock out one of the uh, primary transport legs. It's very similar. We have our um, our business has a, a very strong strategy of um, source-centric logistics, as we call it, which is having your warehouse as close to the source of the product as possible. Um, so therefore, we tend to build where we can warehouses at the back of factories and warehouses. Obviously, the first this is equivalent uh, to a to a factory. So it's because uh, it's the first port, it's the first point that we can actually hit um, the UK, if you like. And therefore, it gives us a great deal of advantage in terms of knocking out a leg, even if it is only a 50 mile leg. It does knock out quite a leg of the, uh, the journey and today's prices, today's fuel prices. That is quite a significant cost reduction. OK. And um, uh, a, a, a might be a piece of news for a large number of people. I know you've just started to use the barge service in a, in a similar way to, uh, to, to, to Michael. Um, what are the benefits that you think you'll get out of it and what, what, what drove you to make the change, apart from us nagging you all the time to use it? Well, it's a rare, mostly because you were nagging me all the time to use it. Um, <laughs> no, I think the, uh, the, the real reason, I mean, obviously on a barge you can get, uh, I think it's in the region of about 200 containers per, uh, per barge. Uh, you're moving it uh, a lot closer to the, uh, to the motorway network and certainly a lot closer to the, uh, again, to our uh, distribution centre. So what we're using it for is, to, is a sort of uh, to knock out uh, at least 50% of the mile of the road leg of the uh, of the transport to the distribution centre, uh, we're also looking at uh, potentially moving the port to a uh, a warehouse facility, which is halfway up the uh, Manchester Ship Canal, which again is closer to the motorway network and therefore can give us significant advantages in terms of getting the uh, getting the product out. <coughs> in times when uh, I think everybody around the uh, uh, in in this room here is trying to save money. Uh, we're up against uh, quite a lot of uh, cost increases, uh, external cost increases, then it's a, uh, it does make a difference to us. The other benefits, obviously, are the CSR benefits. Uh, you've mentioned those before, um, where it's, a, it's obviously a greener route, and by using the barge, we're taking about half a million miles out of the, uh, the road leg, 
uh, of, of the business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, uh, that that was a, a, a rapid uh, run through of the uh, uh, of the points and issues that um, we wanted to share with you today. And um, I, I guess I guess in terms of a summary, you know, where do, where do we believe that, that ports can add value? Um, you know, one of them is location relative to the spread of population. I think I think Frank's just you know touched on that in terms of his initial decisions to uh, to, to to ship through the port of Liverpool. Um, you saw the case study in terms of cargo coming in from Ireland in its intermediate form and, and how that can reduce the complexity in supply chains and, uh, and add flexibility. Um, we've talked a lot about the barge, obviously, with, with, uh, with, with Michael here from Kingsland Wine, who've, who've been a, a long-standing user of the, of the barge service, how alternative transport modes offer routes to efficiency, not, not just green efficiency, but also taking complexity, taking uh, costs out of supply chains. Um, and, and, and finally, the fact that there, are, there can be flexible storage arrangements, whether it's in containers, whether it's using warehouses and buildings differently, flexible storage options exist. Um, now, that, that's a share of, of, of some of where we're up to in, in, in Liverpool and, and the Manchester Ship Canal. Um, I, I guess, just to prove the size of the check wasn't big enough, I guess, final question really to, to, to Michael and to Frank. Um, we obviously think we're fantastic, but I know shippers are always wanting more. So, uh, what what is it that either we need to do next as, at the port of Liverpool, or what what do ports in general need to do to help continue to drive the the value uh, out of the supply chain? Michael, do you want to go first I mean, on that? Well, in in terms of uh, what we do, I would say um, improved feeder services into Liverpool. Certainly, at the moment, there's one a week, but really two a week would really make a big difference. And obviously, ultimately, if you had um, direct deliveries into Liverpool, not into other European ports, that would be a, a major bonus. Okay. Frank, do you want to...? I think it's in terms of uh, Liverpool, the, the question is Liverpool and ports in general. Uh, Liverpool, I mean, clearly they need a deep sea port. Uh, we transship a lot of product, but obviously transshipping a lot of product actually creates lead time, adds extra lead time onto the, uh, to, the, uh, to the shipping time. Uh, by having a deep sea uh, terminal, then obviously you will be able to, um, you, you'll be able to offer that service direct rather than transshipped. Uh, secondly, ports in general, I think it's, I, I touched on it before about the, um, the source-centric logistics and anybody who's importing who then onward delivering to the, uh, to the retailers, there needs to be some sort of consolidation service. The retailers are, are, are destocking, you know, every, every week we want to reduce our lead times or whatever else to the, uh, to the retailers. So therefore, um, to, to offer something which gives a consolidated service to the retailers that's run by a port, that will be uh, a facility that I think a lot of people will be interested in.